That one there called New and Improved by Michael Giacchino. And that is from the Incredibles film, selected by Mr. Michael Brown, who's here with me right now. Hello. Hello, good morning. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm good. Just want to give one more shout out to this beautiful t-shirt that I'm wearing here. And shout out Luke Morrissey, No Profits, Bristol Talents on the camera, always coming through with the videos. Uh, get at Nicole McPeak on Instagram to buy one of these. The website you get them from will double any donation that you make. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, Micah, what's your name? Where are you from? What are you on? Yeah, so my name is Micah Brown. Um, I'm from Bristol and uh, I'm a filmmaker, visual artist. Um, yeah. Bit of everything. Yeah, bit of everything. So yeah, as, as you said, you're you're the founder and director of Kami Studios here in Bristol. You're a filmmaker, animator, visual artist, model, actor, even a musician. Uh, but anything really to enhance the movie, yeah. I think, is, is what you said. Um, a true cinephile, though, so much so that you even work part-time at the cinema just to get that extra dose of I the do. big screen. Um, just talk us through your vision for Kami Studios and for Micah Brown. Um kind of want to be in the future something close to Disney um, that's where I kind of see it going um, not stylistically but just the scale and the influence mm -hmm. um, that's kind of my dream for it um, in terms of right now I'm doing a lot of animation uh, stop motion um, sort of claymation kind of stuff mm -hmm. yeah Sounds good. Big dreams. Yeah. That's a good thing to have though, right? Yeah, yeah. It keeps you motivated. I think if I aim really high, you know, mm -hmm. and I don't get yeah. to the actual place I'm trying to aim to, mm -hmm. but I aim towards that, mm -hmm. it'll be, you know, it will be a good outcome. I agree. So. I completely agree. Um, there's, there's an adorable picture of you holding the camera, for yeah. the, holding a camera for the first time uh, when you were eight on your Instagram. Um, you can almost see you falling in love with it there and then in that picture. Do you, do you still get that same feeling today when you pick up a camera? Yeah, yeah. That wasn't actually the first time I picked up a camera. That was like, I've, there's even first even before even, that. Even, yeah, even younger. Like, but um, I feel like that was on the first time I was on an actual set, mm -hmm. um, with a proper team. But um, yeah, definitely still, I love I love the camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. camera. And I mean, you just kind of alluded to it there. But are there are there any other early moments that you can remember thinking, yeah, this is me? Um. probably around the age of like yeah eight nine when I realized I wanted to like do art mm -hmm. um it wasn't until I was like probably 16 17 that when it, I knew it was film mm -hmm. um but yeah I've been like I've been like this for, for years and years just like watching films I watch like probably three films a week nice yeah so it's, it's been like this for ages yeah and you've just been you've almost been building towards where you are now yeah, from yeah. from a younger age you know yeah. with your art and other things that you do um cool thanks for sharing you sometimes do like to flip the perspective mm. though and be on the other side of the camera taking the lead role in your self-directed moving picture the laundrette mm -hmm. great job there um yeah. Both Thank acting, you. writing, and directing yeah. talent, uh, and even modelled in some quality fashion for Bianca Saunders. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Uh, but you're not just a pretty face, though. You've actually got a bachelor's degree in fine art, a first and all. I mean, even the graduation pics are super chic. Um, but how has putting your artistic uh, and painting talents at the centre of your videography helped guide you towards um, your final goal and where you are today? Um, so. I learned a lot at uni. Um, I've recently basically been trying to incorporate a lot of my painting work into the film, so um, that's kind of where the animation kind of stemmed from. Um, there's an animation I made which will be used as the intro for the films I make, um, which was hand-painted. took like two months, uh, 200 frames. But yeah, that I was trying to basically take my painting style and just make it move basically. That's mm. essentially where it was. Mm. And I mean, it's a beautiful segue really, because let's talk about what you're actually working on at the moment. 
uh, which is a hand-painted animation where you're trying to make the drawings come to life like puppets um, pulled by the gentlest strings, as you told me before. Um, despite it taking long, what other challenges have you faced whilst creating uh, animation compared to uh, working with cameras and real people? Um, obviously, with people, they you know can direct them. They can you can speak to them. Whereas with puppets and inanimate objects, you you have to physically do it yourself. Mm. And if you don't if you don't know how, you just have to figure it out. And that is obviously a, a huge like that cuts out a lot of time. Obviously, mm -hmm. like when you're having to like figure out, okay, how do I cast this or how how does this specific thing move? Mm -hmm. um, whereas actors, you can like just speak to them. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a huge learning curve because I've never done this before. Mm -hmm. So like the style of animation I'm doing now. It's like, um, yeah, it's all new to me. Mm. Yeah, It's come off well, though. As you, you said, you pointed towards the little 30-second trailer that we're going to hear some music from mm -hmm. in just a moment. Uh, yeah, and you said 200 frames, and it took you two months. So I guess there's a lots, of, lots of challenges that you, know, you don't expect. 30 seconds with a camera takes 30 seconds. 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, have you, what have you not missed about working with real people, though? Um, people can be difficult. Yeah, when they don't take direction. <laughs> um, yeah, egos get they get in the way. Yeah, hit it here first. Fuck the ego. Um, let's let's take a listen to to that thirty second clip that we were talking about. It was been produced by Fine and Omar Cassius mm -hmm. um, for you. Can you just tell us a bit about what it was for and um, yeah, the the aim of so, the little clip. That was actually Omar's idea. Um, I always knew I wanted to have a animation intro for my films, but um, it was Omar who was kind of like, oh, you don't have one of these yet, should we make one? So, yeah, we made one. Um, we're kind of trying to create, like, a Disney vibe. Mm -hmm. um, and we just, him and I just sort of, like, playing around and creating a melody for it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Fine um, uh, played some cello. Mm -hmm. And I did a vocal on there as well. I think it, it comes across very well. Yeah. Should we take a listen? Yeah. Disney vibe is alive and well in that one, yeah. for sure. Very magical. Very magical. Yeah. Shout out to Omar and Fine for that one. Uh, and you can find that trailer on your YouTube channel for yeah. Kami Studios, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so thank you so much for letting us play that. I mean, music is obviously an essential part of all films since The Jazz Singer in 1927. Uh, you selected The Incredibles for us to listen to at the start. Um, it was called New and Improved. What other movies have standout soundtracks for you? Um, Akira. Um, it's the first that comes to mind. Um, there's so many. Um, Scarface. Mm. Um, yeah. Brian Department 1983. Um, I'm trying to think of other ones. There's so many, there's so many. I think all films have a great soundtracks. Um, uh, all of um, Nolan's films have mm -hmm. amazing soundtracks, but that's like such a huge part of the filmmaking process. Mm -hmm. Just like the sound design and soundtrack, um, it, like obviously for obvious reasons. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, and it pairs so perfectly. Yeah, um, Micah, please in thirty seconds or less, can you impart some wisdom for us today? I would say, in terms of goals. Um, and achieving stuff, I'll say try to write everything down as as a list, and just literally try to like tick it off because it works. Mm -hmm. When you write stuff down, it actually makes it a lot easier. It works really well. Mm. Thank you very much for sharing. If you didn't write shit down already, do it. Yeah, it really makes a difference. Um, especially longer term goals. I don't really do that. I usually write to do lists mm -hmm. for my day, not for my year or my ten years. I, I mean, like yeah, like. Week, month, year, it literally, and you can literally tick it off, you know, because you're just breaking it down into 
weeks. What a great plan. Yeah. Uh, what do we need to know, Micah? What's going on in your world? A lot. Um, regarding what? Anything. There's Film, social medias, stuff coming out, music. I have a documentary coming out um, soon. We're working on it right now. Is, well, we're filming right now. We're yeah, in we production are. with that. Um, which will basically be, I don't want to say too much about it, but it will be a documentary surrounding the scene that I'm basically in, the Bristol scene, and just like mm -hmm. the creative people I'm around. Um, but yeah, look forward to that. Great. So get to at Micah Brown with two N's on Instagram or at Kami Studios also on Instagram, YouTube, Vimeo uh, or KamiStudios.com yeah. to check out what you're up to. Um, okay, so we didn't really touch on this too much and we, I need Vet to step up here real quick as well. Um, but you, you do also dabble in music. You've produced some things, you've put some yeah. vocals down and this and that. But as you say, mostly for the cause of enhancing the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, however, sometimes just like to have a little bit of fun, like we've got now. We've got a real and true exclusive. Um, it's got loads of people on. Vet, Mag, sorry, on. Get, Vet, Mag, Gutter, Micah, produced by Fine. Give us a bit of an insight into how this track came about. So, um, I, we were, who was it? Me, Gutter, and Fine, um, mm -hmm. messing around. We literally, I, I co-produced it with them. Um, Mm -hmm. And then shout out you guys. Yeah, yeah. You and Mag, Vet and Mag. Um, yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm trying to remember how that happened. That was like almost a year ago now. Mm. So it was, I think it was summer 2021. Uh, this guy was around Gutter's house. Mm -hmm. um, and he called up Mag. I was with Mag. We pulled up. And then we just got it cracking. I feel like, yeah, man. Just wavy, wavy vibes. Uh, yeah, Michael was on the white wine, I believe. <laughs> uh, that was the vibe. So. Always helps. Always. So this this <laughs> yeah. one's called Tank. Always helps. Brackets, pop the pill. I never Exclusive. Heard you heard it before me, so. Thank you so much for coming on, Micah. My mic was off. I said thank you so much for coming on, Micah. Thanks for having me. Let's pull this up. I can't pull it up. <laughs> Let's start that again, because... Uh, Run around town in the tank. 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 Pop to pill and back in the Uber. Just had to pull that one up real quick because that was bare messy by me. Shout out, Micah, for coming through. Thank you for chatting. Really appreciate you coming down and uh, sharing your insights with us. Cannot wait to see what's coming up. This track coming out soon. It's called Tank. Micah, thank you. Thanks for having me.